she's also got the same anatomy. She's got the same physiology. She's got the fallopian tube and she's got the ovulation happening and the oocyte has come in here and it has become a corpus luteum and that corpus luteum is making the progesterons. Let's see the same menstrual cycle in a much younger woman, okay? A much younger woman, let's say only of 17 years. She's also got the same anatomy. She's got the same physiology. She's got the fallopian tube and she's got the ovulation happening and the oocyte has come in here and it has become a corpus luteum and that corpus luteum is making the progesterons and the endometrium is secretory because of the progesterons. It's all the same. She is also sexually mature, but yes, she's not having sex so far. So she's a 17 year old girl who is not sexually active. So now ovulation has happened and this is made a corpus luteum and the progesterone has kept the endometrium ready. But she is not going to get the embryo. It's not that she is not even going to get the sperms. So how long is the oocyte's life? It's only 24 hours. In 24 hours to 48 hours, the oocyte will die. The oocyte dies in 24 to 48 hours, but the corpus luteum does not give up hope. It is waiting. It is keeping the endometrium ready. Six day, seven day after ovulation, eighth, ninth. 9th to the 10th day, 9th to the 10th day, the corpus luteum gives up hope that, okay, this month also there's no going to be any pregnancy. So, let's go away from here. So, corpus luteum starts to degenerate. Please remember, 9 to 10 days starts to degenerate. The complete degeneration, complete degeneration MCQ of the, of the corpus luteum takes place 14 to 15 days. These are MCQs, okay. The maximum function of a corpus luteum is the 9 to the 10 day. In this 9 to 10 day, the embryo never came, corpus luteum degenerated and the progesterone reduced. And the progesterone reduced, that causes the shedding of the endometrium. What did I say? Shedding or expelling? I said shedding. Shedding of the endometrium is a progesterone withdrawal event. Shedding of the endometrium is a progesterone withdrawal event. Okay, I did not say expulsion. Expulsion is a whole different ball game. This cervix, can you look at this length of the cervix? My hand is like a, a uterus now. Can you see? This is a uterus, there's a cavity, and there's the cervix. So look at the length of the cervix, especially in a young girl. This long cervix, you think it's going to just open up and allow the endometrium to walk out? No. The uterus is going to work very hard to open the cervix just that little bit. So for the uterus to open, the ut for the cervix to open rather, the uterus has to undergo a lot of contractions. It has to undergo a lot of contractions and a lot of squeezing to open up the cervix just that little bit. And just that little bit opening will allow the endometrium to come out as periods. So yes, a lot of contractions are required. So this cervix opens just this little bit. It opens just this little bit and the endometrium comes out as menstruation. So that's why it is associated with a lot of pain. Yes, that's the cause of the pain of menstruation, which all of you know is known as the dysmenorrhea. So what is the cause of dysmenorrhea? It's the contractions of the uterine muscle. These muscles are contracting and squeezing to open up the cervix, especially a young girl's cervix. You know the length of the cervix is at least 3.5 to 4 centimeters. What is a short cervix? Huh? MCQ. A short cervix is what is less than 2.5 centimeters. Yes, that's an obstetrics. We'll come back to that. A short cervix will promote an abortion sometimes. So long cervix of a young woman will take a lot of contractions to open up the cervix and it will be associated with a lot of pain. So that's the cause of the dysmenorrhea.